John. Uh, Raj, a couple, if I could. Uh, at the same time, there was a celebratory air in Jerusalem as the U.S. was moving its embassy. Uh, in the south of Israel, along the border with Gaza, there was a lot of violence that resulted in more than 41 people losing their lives. Is the president concerned about the demonstrations there and Israel's response to people trying to climb over the fence? Well, we're aware of the reports of continued violence in Gaza today. The responsibility for these tragic deaths rests squarely with Hamas. Hamas is intentionally and cynically provoking this response. And as the Secretary of State said, Israel has the right to defend itself. Also, what's the president's thinking on, on ZTE? I mean, here is a company that violated U.S. rules regarding doing business with North Korea and Iran. It was, according to the Commerce Department, appropriately sanctioned for that fine $1.2 billion. Uh, you have the heads of six intelligence agencies telling Congress back on February 13th that they wouldn't use ZTE devices because of counter espionage concerns. They also wouldn't recommend that American citizens use ZTE or Huawei devices. So what's the president's thinking with that tweet over the weekend about wanting to rescue ZTE? Obviously, this um, is part of a very complex relationship between the United States and China that involves economic issues, national security issues, um, and the like. Um, and it's an issue of high concern for China uh, that's been raised with the, US, uh, with the U.S. government and with our administration at various levels. So the president has asked Secretary Loss, Ross to uh, look into it uh, consistent with applicable laws and regulations. Um, I guess I wanted to, to follow on that. Did the president give Secretary Ross any specific instructions on how he wanted that case to go? And when you say that it was raised, I assume you mean in the context of the ongoing trade discussions between the U.S. and China. So is there a sort of direct linkage there where China could make a concession on, you know, retaliatory tariffs? And so we'd see from the U.S. kind of easing back on, on ZT. Well, he's asked uh, Secretary Ross to look into the matter, again, consistent with uh, applicable laws and regulations. And it's been brought up uh, at a number of levels, um, you know, as part of bilateral talks on a number of issues. I wouldn't restrict it to just uh, the talks that you're referencing. Follow on that, Yeah. Um, didn't the Commerce Department make an independent judgment when they decided to issue this sanction against ZTE? So can you talk about the significance of bringing it up again now? Um, how much does it have to do with the impending summit with North Korea? You know, critics will say that uh, the president wants China's support, needs China's support, and that is why he is now backing off <coughs> on this sanction against ZTE. It's part of, again, the U.S. relationship with China, which is complex. It has economic factors. It has national security factors. This is just one of many factors. And again, the President is asking Secretary Com uh, the Secretary of Commerce to look into the matter consistent with laws and regulation. Second question, yeah. Cecilia. Thanks, uh, Senator Lindsey Graham said, I wish somebody from the White House would tell the country that what Kelly Sadler said was inappropriate, that that's not <coughs> who we are as a Trump administration. Why not just apologize so America doesn't think that that is an acceptable way of speaking inside this White House? Well, I understand the focus on this issue, but it's going to be dealt with uh, and has been dealt with internally. Um, you know, I was told, now? hang on, I was told Kelly Sadler uh, called the McCain family late last week and did apologize. Um, and uh, beyond that, I don't have further comments. She, excuse me, but she, she, Kelly Sadler told Meghan McCain that she would apologize publicly, and that has not yet happened. Why has that not happened? Well, I wasn't on the call. I was told uh, she made it prior to the story being published, and she apologized for the comments. She apologized directly to the family. Are there, any are there any concerns that this White House seems more concerned about the fact that there was a leak than about the content of what was said? Well, I think, um, you know, we're concerned about all sorts of matters, but um, this is an internal matter. It's being addressed uh, internally, and I don't have anything further to add. How is it being addressed Can you explain how it's being addressed internally? Obviously, if I uh, explain all that, then it won't remain she's internal. She's still employed here at the White she House. She is still House. an employee here at the White House. She came to work today. How, why has she, she publicly apologized as she told Meg McCain that she would? She is she is uh, addressed it with the family directly, and I don't have anything further okay, to add. Really quick, Raj, on yeah. ZTE, um, how does the President Trump's statement that too many Chinese jobs are at risk 
square with his campaign promise that China is stealing American jobs? Well, I don't think this has, um, frankly, any bearing on the president's uh, campaign promises. Let's just look at the overall economic record, right? The president uh, has overseen an economy in which uh, we have the lowest unemployment rate uh, since 2000, right? It's at 3.9 percent. Over 2 million jobs have been created since this president took office. And on with respect to trade with China, he's been tough. Let's put this in the context. I mean, this president uh, has taken China to task for its unfair trade practices. Uh, through the Section 301 investigation, he's introduced uh, and proposed over, or rather up to $150 billion of tariffs on China for uh, intellectual property, property theft, uh, dumping, and a range of um, you know, inimical uh, Chinese economic actions. So he's been tough, and he's confronted them. But on this issue specifically, he's asked the Secretary of Commerce to take a look at it. Raj, Steve. Hi, Raj uh, the death toll is over 50 in Gaza. Is the U.S. calling on Israel to use restraint in, in dealing with these protests? Well, we believe that um, you know, Hamas is responsible for these for these uh, tragic deaths. That their uh, rather cynical um, exploitation of the situation it is what is what's leading to these deaths, and uh, we want them to stop. So there's no burden on Israel to do something to sort of rein it in. No, we we think that uh, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that Hamas is the one that, uh, frankly, bear responsibility for the dire situation right now in Gaza. Lastly, Raj, how does this, the United States has been wanting to put out a peace plan. How does today's situation uh, hurt that? I don't think it hurts the, the peace plan. Um, the peace plan will be introduced at the appropriate time. But um, what today is about is uh, following through on what the president promised and believes, and it's also recognition of reality. I think we've, uh, for decades, uh, you know, walked on eggshells pretending that uh, Jerusalem isn't the capital of Israel when it obviously is, and this is just a recognition of reality. Right. David? Uh, yes, uh, right. There seemed to be some confusion uh, given the messages over the on Sunday the news shows uh, from Secretary Pompeo and uh, National Security Advisor Bolton about what exactly the U.S. is asking of North Korea. Is the administration's position uh, that the U.S. expects the complete verifiable, irreversible denuclearization of the peninsula and of North Korea, or is the administration uh, willing to accept, accept something short of that? I don't want to get ahead of negotiations, but our policy has been to pursue the complete, uh, irreversible, and verifiable denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, and that's going to be the, the purpose of the yeah, June plan. Also, if, yeah. you, if you could address a little bit um, this idea that criticism of the president's sort of his tone with the um, the uh, dictator of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, uh, okay. saying that he treated the U.S. Um, detainees uh, excellently. Uh, it, the president's uh, rhetoric has certainly shifted on, on uh, Kim Jong-un. Uh, and I'm wondering uh, if, if, if you could explain why uh, and whether he thinks that it, at all that he is going too far uh, in sort of praising uh, Kim Jong-un. Well, I think the president's uh, rhetoric has reflected Kim Jong-un's actions. I think that uh, Kim Jong-un has stepped forward and um, made pledges to uh, halt nuclear tests, halt ICBM tests, and now has released these three prisoners. And those are uh, signs of good faith, and we hope to build on that. Raj. Peter. Uh, if I can, very quickly, the French Foreign Minister Raj said about what's taking place in Gaza, he urged Israeli authorities to exercise discretion and restraint. So to be clear, does the U.S. not agree with the French? that Israeli authorities should exercise discretion and dis uh, restraint? We believe that Hamas is responsible for what's going on. So there's no responsibility beyond that on the Israeli authorities. Kill at will. What, what I'm saying is that we believe that Hamas, as an organization, is engaged in cynical action that's leading to these deaths. Let me ask you if I can, then following up on Kelly Sadler today. Matt Schlapp, whose wife you know, Mercedes Schlapp, works yes. here as the head of strategic communications, portrayed Kelly Sadler as a little bit of a victim here. Do you agree that she's a little bit of a victim here, and why? Well, uh, again, the matter is going to be addressed, uh, has been addressed internally, but what I will say is that when you work in any work environment, uh, you with your colleagues at, at NBC um, or elsewhere, um, if you don't uh, if you aren't able in internal meetings to speak your mind or, or convey thoughts or say anything that you feel uh, without feeling like your colleagues will betray you, that creates a very difficult work environment. I think anybody who works anywhere could recognize Is that. Is there any environment where that conveying that thought would be viewed as appropriate? You know, I'm not going to address it any further. It's been so. To be clear, was it completed last week? You said it was is dealt with internally. Has it anything been dealt with since last week when she called the family, uh, the McCain family, for clarity? She she called the McCain family. 
Uh, I'm not going to address it anymore uh, from the podium. I just I might ask you an indelicate question. It's been sure. reported that you were leading the meeting where Kelly Sadler said what she said. Mm -hmm. How did it strike you? Did you find it to be inappropriate? And how did, what, what was the reaction in the room? Well, look, this is not about uh, my opinion or anybody else's opinion. It's an internal matter, and we're, uh, we've are we addressed it internally. Raj. 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 Anita. <laughs> Two questions. Um, first, the White House is hosting some kind of meeting on Wednesday with California officials on sanctuary cities. Can you tell us what that's about? Will the president attend, and what's the, what's the point of the meeting? Well, um, uh, I can't uh, obviously get ahead of the meeting, but um, look, uh, the Department of Justice is engaged in um, certain litigation regarding uh, sanctuary cities uh, in California. We believe that uh, California should help us and all municipalities and states should help the, uh, the federal government in enforcing federal law, in helping to deport when appropriate uh, criminal illegal immigrants, and, um, you know, help I guess stem the tide of um, you know illegal immigration in the United States. It's actually on the rise now. It's a point of frustration for the president for the administration. So uh, that'll be part of obviously what's discussed. So no negotiation. This Ladies. is just to solidify your point. I think that I'm saying that I'm not going to get ahead of the meeting. Okay. And this is my second question: mm -hmm. Is the president's going to Capitol Hill tomorrow to meet with Senate Republicans? Can you tell us about that meeting? And do you? The topic of the conversation, and also, do you think he will not get asked by senators about the Kelly, Kelly Sadler issue? Well, obviously, you have to ask senators what they'll ask him. Um, but I, I, I think he will be uh, discussing the administration's agenda. I think a focus of that will be on appointees and getting uh, the president's team in place, uh, particularly Gina Haspel, who we believe uh, should be confirmed as the next CIA director. This is an individual who's had over three decades of exemplary service and experience with the CIA, uh, and we hope that the Senate uh, takes it upon themselves to confirm her. Besides right. the CIA, right. is there another right. issue? Yeah. It's not solely to talk about the It's to talk about the administration's agenda. Raj. 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 Yeah. Raj. You said you had a meeting. You said you had a meeting. The Trump so, Organization. You, you okay, I'll get to you next. Fair. Thank yeah. you. I thought you said you had a meeting. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> the Trump Organization is involved in a project in Indonesia, uh, building hotels, uh, golf course residences. Uh, it's getting up to $500 million in backing from the Chinese government. Can you tell or you know, explain the administration's perspective on A, how this wouldn't violate the emoluments clause, and B, um, how it wouldn't violate the president's own promise that uh, his private organization would not be getting involved in new foreign deals while he was president. I'll have to refer you to the Trump organization. No, but I mean the Trump organization can't speak on behalf of the president as the president, the head of the federal government, the one who is who's responsible and who needs to assure the American people and, that and they don't asking, have that responsibility. But you're asking about a private organization's dealings that may have to do with a foreign government. That's not something that I can speak to. So, Raj, yeah. a couple of things. Um, I need some information. We all need more information about the conversation that the president had by phone with James Shaw Jr. and why wasn't it here at the White House? Um, and also, what about prison reform? If you can give us a little bit more about prison reform, we understand that that's working its way and there's a big push from the White White House, and also on, on Sadler, where does decency and morality come in, into play on in the workplace? I mean, she still has a job. She made that statement about an American hero. No matter what the political uh, feelings are about him, he was broken and bruised overseas for the freedoms of this country. And to say those things, I mean... Again, uh, that's an internal matter and uh, has been addressed internally. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned prison reform. Uh, we're pleased to see uh, last week the House uh, mark up with a pretty broad bipartisan vote uh, prison reform legislation uh, that the White House is supportive of, that um, particular Jared Kushner uh, has uh, been very involved with. Um, you know, we believe that. Um, you know, that, that uh, legislation can help reduce costs at prisons uh, and improve quality. Um, we hope to see it, uh, you know, looked at at the House floor and then eventually pass the Senate. Um, and with respect, to, with respect to James Shaw, um, you know, it, it, was a, it was a conversation that uh, the President asked to, to have. And House. Why, why not? I mean, he's saluting I, heroes. I, honestly, I don't know if he if he was invited. I, I, I just honestly don't have more for you, Raj. Uh, Raj. Uh, thank you, Raj. I wanted to ask you about uh, the embassy opening today. The yep. uh, person who delivered the invocation, uh, Robert Jeffries, 
uh, he's made some statements in the past that uh, he believes that uh, Muslims are going to hell, Jews are going to hell, Hindus are going to hell. Do you think uh, that, considering especially his remarks about Jews, that he's one of the right people to speak at the opening of our embassy in Israel? And can you give us a little information on how that came to be? Well, I honestly don't know uh, how that came to be. And, um, you know, I, I know that uh, I think it's Pastor Jeffries, um, you know, has had, um, you know, a strong relationship with many people in the faith community, um, as well as folks in the administration and Republicans uh, on the Hill and others. Um, I believe Democrats as well. So uh, I think that he has a longstanding involvement with public officials. Um, you know, beyond that, I don't really have a whole lot to add. Do you think it's appropriate for a person who thinks that who said that Jews are going to hell to speak at the opening of our well, embassy in Israel? I, I, you know, I haven't seen those remarks, but uh, obviously there's, those aren't remarks that the president makes. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, so I have two questions for you. First on ZTE, did the Chinese government give any specific concession for the president of the United States to tweet in support of a Chinese company? Um, no, the, the president has asked Secretary Ross to look into the matter uh, consistent with... On, why did he do the, that? The issue has been raised at many levels by the Chinese government with the with um, various levels of our administration. So just raising the issue was enough to spawn a presidential... Well, it's it's a significant issue of concern of the Chinese government. You know, and in our bilateral relationship, there's a give and take, uh, and we and we discuss these issues. And then another on uh, uh, the president's tweet on Paris. He said that America needs to change its thought processes. What did he mean by that? What was he hinting at? Well, um, I think that um, you know, I think that the president uh, wants uh, the United States to be tough on terrorists. Wants our government to be tough on terrorists. Uh, I haven't asked him about that specific tweet, but I think his thoughts on how to address terrorism are pretty clear both through um, the legal system, through our international, uh, through our foreign affairs policy. Um, so just understanding the existential threat that terrorists pose to American citizens and addressing it accordingly. Raj. Yeah. Raj, um, yeah. <laughs> on the issue of peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians, when was the last time the White House reached out to Palestinian leadership? And will, given the high numbers of casualties, uh, Palestinians calling what's happened today a massacre. Will the White House be reaching out? Well, uh, I don't honestly have an answer for you on that. I'll, I'll get okay, back to you. Just follow up then. Sure. I mean, Jared Kushner in his speech pointed a finger at the Palestinians saying they were responsible for provoking violence. But given the fact that it's only Palestinians that are being killed, should Israel not shoulder some of the blame? Well, as I said earlier, we believe Hamas bears the responsibility. Look, this is a propaganda attempt. I mean, this is a, a gruesome and unfortunate propaganda attempt. I think the Israeli government has spent weeks um, trying to handle this uh, without violence. And uh, we find it very unfortunate. People rocks 50 meters from the wall and were faced with sniper attack. I mean, is the White House in denial of the split screen reality that's occurring? Again, we believe that Hamas is responsible for this. Blake, uh, thank you. let me ask you, um, on ZTE, the congressional hearing that John was talking about in which the intelligence chief said that people should not be using ZTE products because of security concerns. Does the president himself believe that there is a security concern using involved with ZTE? I haven't asked him about that. Um, but again, he has asked the Commerce Department to look into this matter consistent with applicable laws and regulations. Speaking of the Commerce Department, Wilbur Ross said uh, at the National Press Club just a little while ago, he said uh, of the meeting this upcoming week with the Chinese, he said, it wouldn't surprise me if they bring up ZTE, but our position is that it would be an enforcement action separate from trade. Is that the position of the White House, that whatever may or may not happen with ZTE, that has nothing to do with trade negotiations, or does it? Well, I think... Um Secretary Ross speaks for the U.S. government on this matter, and, uh, uh, you know, the president has asked him to look into it. Um, I haven't seen those remarks, and I'm sure there'll be some follow-up conversations, but and, he does reflect our view. And on the Supreme Court decision today on, on sports gambling um, that allowed now states to go forward with that, does the White House have any opinion one way or another on, on the decision today? Uh, I don't right? have a reaction for you just yet. Raj, Raj, on Israel, the United States and the White House are hoping to release their peace plan in the next few months. Going back to that split screen, I understand that you're blaming these on Hamas, but does the White House feel that that the position is undermined now by these deaths that have happened today that have, uh, last time the count was at 52? 
Um, uh, no, we don't. Look, the peace plan will be uh, brought forward at the appropriate time. Uh, it can be evaluated on its merits, but um, the actions today, both the opening of the uh, embassy in Jerusalem and these tragedies uh, in in uh, southern Israel, um, uh, we don't think will uh, impact the peace plan. And on a, a, a different foreign policy topic, sort of, the president isn't going to the royal wedding this weekend. Today we saw him deliver a video address at the embassy opening. Will he deliver an address of some sort by a video? Is he sending a gift? Is there anything you can tell us about that? I don't have anything for you. <laughs> yes. Uh, last month, the uh, uh, Sarah said that the allegations against the governor Sorry, of Missouri. The, the, the last again? month, Sarah said the uh, the allegations against the governor of Missouri were concerning. The governor now is on trial this week. Um, <laughs> does the president believe he should resign? He's campaigned with him. He's been out with him. He's met him several times. Does he believe he should resign, irrespective of the verdict, or if the verdict comes down in his favor, should he not resign? I'll have to get back to you on that. I don't. I don't have anything. Yes. Uh, Raj. Uh, thank you, Raj. Uh, so later this week, Thursday and Friday, Chinese officials are supposed to be here in D.C. to have continued trade meetings. Can you tell us which U.S. officials and which Chinese officials are going to be involved in those, what the president hopes to come out of those continued talks, this round of those talks, and uh, has the administration provided, uh, I know Larry Kudlow had mentioned one, at one point that the U.S. was, or the administration was considering providing a list of what they'd like to see out of these trade negotiations. Well, some of those details, the participants in particular, have yet to be determined, um, and, and um, we'll provide that information when it's ready. Um, but uh, look, uh, the U.S.-China relationship, again, is a complex one. Uh, we believe that um, China has engaged in decades of unfair trade practices, forced technology transfers, and the like. That was part of the discussion that went on. Um, you know, with, when the U.S. delegation or U.S. Uh, uh, group of uh, administration officials went to China, and that's going to be continued, um, continued later this week. All right, last question, Hunter. Thank you, Raj. Um, you, you said before that you hadn't heard um, Pastor Jefferson's remarks. Among other things, he said, "quote Mormonism, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, quote they lead people to an eternity of separation from God in hell." Um, I also wanted to talk about Pastor John Hagee, who was involved in that ceremony. He once said that Hitler was an instrument of God. Um, separate from that, on Sunday, Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump met with um, Rabbi Yitzhak Yosef, um, the chief Sephardic rabbi in Israel, and he once compared black people to monkeys. So I'm wondering, in all three of these instances, mm -hmm. can you tell us anything about how these people were brought into the ceremonies? And do you think it's re regrettable that people with these views were involved with the uh, American I, government? At this I point? don't have... Um any readout on how uh, they became involved with these events. All I'll say is that those specific views that you outlined, uh, if they're accurate reflections of what was said, uh, wouldn't be embraced by this White House. Uh, beyond that, I don't have anything else. Well, Thanks a lot, know, folks. Should we know before you come to the podium whether or not?